Welcome back to Rust the Wasp, my name is Miguel, on today's video I want to share with you the trick that I used to paint this starry cape for this alternative female wizard for Hero Quest. This beautiful sculpt was sent to me by my friend Dante. I think it is a great miniature for a couple of reasons. First of all, it is very similar to the original wizard miniature from the classic version of the game. This is a big plus for me. If you remember one of my videos where I restored my first copy of the game, some minis were missing and I had to source a wizard from my beats box. Dante saw this and thought it would be awesome if I could use his wizard. The style is online with the original wizard, so it looks right at home with the rest of the minis, as you can see. Secondly, the sculpt is feminine but not overtly sexualized. I believe this is a good point, not because I find pinup miniatures unpalatable, but because I want female players at my table to feel comfortable with the choices of minis I present them with for games. The sculpt is crisp, with barely any mold lines and easy to assemble. It is a monopose model and it comes with a separate Hero Quest style base, but you can put it on a round or a square base of your choice. On the quality side, there was one small bubble that I fixed very easily, but the sculpt is crisp and I really had to look hard to find any mold lines. I made sure to leave some links on the description so you can get yourself a copy if you like the sculpt. I want to particularly focus on the cape of the miniature. I know some of you are still deciding how to paint your wizards for the game, so stay tuned because I am going to show you a very simple technique to create an awesome garment for your wizards. To begin, I primed the mini with black spray paint and then did a zenithal coat with pure white and then highlighted the areas I thought needed some extra pop with pure white. This is going to help a lot with the painting process by creating natural highlights and shading, which is perfect for washes and glazes. We are going to start with the cape. This is because of the way I am going to paint it, which means that I need to be careful not to stain around it. The easiest way to achieve this is by not painting anything else before I finish with the technique I am about to show you. So what is this legendary technique that I'm talking about over and over again? Well, first of all, I need to tell you what are we trying to achieve here? A starry sky. I want the cape to look like the classic wizard cape with the stars and galaxies in it. The way we are going to achieve this in a way that even the noobest of noobs can do it too, it's so easy, it's gonna blow your mind. First, we paint the cape with a couple of blue washes, contrast colors or inks. Once we are happy with the results, we can then proceed to the technique I wanted to show you. Flicking the brush. Pretty sure other artists who are smarter, more knowledgeable people will have a different name for it. For me, it is just flicking. The idea is to mix the color of your choice with a little water or median so the consistency is liquid enough for this to work. This is the trickiest part. Too much water and there will be less pigment too little water and the paint might not flick properly. Make sure you experiment with consistency until you get the desired result. After I'm done with that step, I am now adding some purple filters to the deepest areas of the cape to make the blue look more vibrant on the highlights. And then I add some stars with yellow and red, this time by hand. Less is more, so I try not to overdo it. With that, the cape is done, and now I can proceed to the other areas, but first, I'll clean up a little bit with pure white. Let's paint the tunic. I'm gonna use yellow because it goes great with blue. First, we're gonna use Lamenter's yellow, and then Cassandra yellow. I will finish it off with highlights of pure yellow paint. For the skin, I will use Gilliman Flesh. And then I'm going to add some shading with Cardboard Crimson. And after all this is done, I will add some final highlights with pure white paint. Then I glaze with Raglan Flesh Shade wherever I feel the highlights are too strong. 
and after the main areas have been painted, it is just a matter of painting the small details. The leather boots. The belt. The staff. The metal areas are the staff top and bottom, the tiara, the ring, the belt buckle and the pendant, the earrings. All of those I paint first with Gehenna's gold and wash them with sepia. Once the sepia wash is dry, I recovered some of the Gehenna's gold with the same paint. And after everything is done, I give them a last edge highlight with silver. In this case, Broomfang steel. I wanted the hair of the wizard white. And for that, what I did is I just gave it a wash with apothecary white. Then I shaded in the deepest recesses with the Space Wolf's gray and retouch with careful highlights with pure white to make the strands pop. Now the gems and the eyes are painted with black and then I paint inside that with a little bit of white, leaving a thin rim around. The robe is a little bit bland if I leave it only in yellow color, so I add some four point stars and a moon painted with pure red ink, tying it with the astrology theme of the cape. The same red ink is used for the lips. And after carefully painting the eyes, I use warp lining green. Contrast Orc Flesh and after this dries I carefully highlight with white again. Now the gems themselves have their own method so please make sure to check this video so you can see how to do gems with contrast paints. The miniature is finished. It only needs my traditional base for hero quest and we can call this miniature done. The result is this, a miniature that looks at home on the original game, great for a nice afternoon of painting and a good option for those who want to play with a female character. If you want to see more HeroQuest related content, check out this playlist or if you want to see other stuff I paint, how about this video? My name is Miguel, this is Rush the Wars and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Un beso, adios.